Hello, this is Pastor Jeff. We want to thank you for joining us for this online worship experience. I hope you're blessed by this word today. And if you want to know more about Hope Church, you can visit us at this website below me, realchurchforrealpeople.com. for you and watch this for my everybody say my that's not talking about me that's talking about him it says my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my what about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me 
That is why, for Christ's sake, I am I delight in weakness and in insult and hardship and persecution and difficulties. Watch this. It says, For when I am weak, everybody say weak. weak. Then I am strong. Yes, amen. I'm strong. Let's hey man, I got something up here. I won't see what this is. Hold on for a minute for me, all right? Sometimes I get distracted. Oh, this is an invitation. Wow. That's a good invitation. Wow, I like that. Wow, okay. Uh, as I'm thinking of reading this, it reminds me of, of one time that we received an invitation to a wedding, my wife and I, and we laughed hysterically because we like to clown around a little bit and laugh and, and just have fun and crack up, right? Because God gave us a sense of humor, we might as well use it, right? So we received this invitation to Mel, and it said, to Mr. and Mrs. April Martin. <laughs> Some, somebody got it wrong, I guess, right? <laughs> and I just got to thinking as I'm looking at my invitation here, did you ever get an invitation uh, to an event or something, you're invited to something and you didn't want to go? Amen. Amen. Nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> and in order to get out of not going, we come up with this beautiful, elaborate, and sometimes maybe it's just a simple excuse. Let me get back to my invitation. I'm going to put that away for right now, all right? So last week we talked about no more excuses. We looked at the story of Moses and how he offered all these excuses to God, and God basically just shut him up, and he said, now Moses, just go. In other words, listen to what I am telling you to do. This week I want to go a little bit further uh, in, in a different story. I want to look at the story about a, an invitation that was given. And there were excuses why people said they could not come to this banquet. And I just want to stop there and tell you this banquet that we're talking about, each and every one of us in this place has been invited. I am so glad my name is on the invitation list and I'm invited to come into a relationship with Jesus. Somebody say, I'm invited. Amen? Amen. Now listen, I believe today God wants to minister to you. I believe as this message is preached, it could be life-changing for you if we will receive it and apply it to our lives. But the reality is that sometimes we come in and we hear a word and God gives us something. And we make an excuse to why we can't apply the teaching of God's word into our life. So I want this to be life altering, not because I'm preaching it or I'm delivering it. It's because it's the word. And I think if we apply it to our lives and let our hearts be open, God wants to speak to us today. But the question is, are we going to act on what he tells us to do or are we going to make an excuse an excuse here's the question i want you to think about for a moment what does god want to be different or better in my life now for some of us we could say there's some addictions i need to quit for some of us we could say i maybe need to lose weight for some of us we need to say i need to spend more time with with my family and i ask this question what does god want to be different or better in my life Ask yourself that question, and as you answer that question, some of us will say, God wants this to be different or better in my life, but, and when we put that in there, we leave room for an excuse. And let's be honest, we are great at making excuses. Watch this, as soon as I decide that God wants something different or better in my life, the enemy will come in, Satan, and give me an excuse to stay the same way. He will give me an excuse to stay in the same way because he does not want you to change. He doesn't want you to be close to God. He doesn't want you to be better tomorrow than you are today. He's perfectly fine for you just to sit in the rocking chair and rock and never make progress in your life. And as soon as we make a decision to make a difference and change, all of a sudden he will offer us many, many excuses. There's a story in the Bible, and I love this story. This is a story that Jesus told. It's a story about an invitation. Everybody say an invitation. invitation. And it's found in Luke 14. In verse number 6, it said, Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet. Everybody say a great banquet. It says a great supper. And he invited what? He invited 
Many. He invited many. Verse number 17. Go ahead and read that for me, Braden. And sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. The invitation was given, and he said, it is now ready. I mean, this was a banquet. Just imagine the type of banquet you would like to go to. For some, we'd like a banquet with steak. For some, give me pizza and wings. For some, you know, give me some chicken parm and spaghetti and lasagna. But this banquet, I believe, had everything that you could want. The feast was now ready, and now it was time to celebrate because they were invited to the banquet. I'm so glad I'm invited to know Jesus. But watch this. Because they were invited to the banquet, you think they would come with joy. But watch what they did. They did what many of us would do. They started to formulate excuses to why they couldn't come to the banquet. Watch verse number 18. Go ahead. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. Begin to make what? Excuses. Begin to make what? Excuses. Well, let's look at these excuses that they offered. What did the first one say? Go ahead. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Now, this is kind of a funny excuse. A guy said, I bought a piece of ground in a field, and now all of a sudden this real estate investor who bought something without even seeing it decides it is time to go see it. He can't wait till tomorrow. He has to go right now. Right now is the time to go see it. Does it did he really have to go see it, or was it an excuse? What do you think? And we're so good at this. I heard recently uh, a friend <laughs> asked another friend, he said, hey, will you go to the gym with me? And he said, I can't go to the gym until I lose a few pounds. <laughs> that seems a little off, right? And here's Mr. Real Estate Investor saying, I would love to come to this banquet, but I need to go see this property that, that I, I bought and didn't see. Everybody say, big excuse. Big say it again, big excuse. Big excuse. Well, there's, there's more. There's more excuses. Watch this. Go to the next verse. Watch this excuse. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you, have me excused. I would love to come to the banquet, but see, I bought this oxen, and now I need to go test them out. Like, I don't claim to be a farm boy, but I don't even know what that means. Like, I'm going to go test out the animals that I bought now? Like, do you think that was a legitimate excuse, or was he just not wanting to attend the banquet? I think it was just another big excuse. It's like the excuse I heard that uh, a student emailed their teacher, emailed their teacher and said, sorry, I couldn't do my homework. I didn't have internet access. <laughs> Some of you are like, what does that mean? If you can email somebody, you should... Uh, never mind. Let's go to the next excuse. <laughs> This is, we'll say the best for last. This is the best excuse. Watch this. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. He blamed it on his wife. Adam was on to something back in the garden, but he said, the woman made me do it. You know, for married people, it's interesting because you could come up with an excuse together, and sometimes you could blame it on the other person. One time I was talking to a guy, and he said... Pastor, I saw I wasn't here last week for church. I said, oh, that, okay. He said, well, my wife just doesn't want to get up on Sunday mornings. I don't know what to do about it. But, you know, we got here this week, so we're a little bit late. I was like, oh, glad you're here. Well, at the end of the service, was out there, and the wife combined. She said, oh, man, I wish you would have been here last week. She said, but I couldn't get him out of bed. <laughs> and his eyes got real big. And I'm thinking, you should have at least coordinated your excuse, which one of you are a sleepyhead. You should at least be on the same page. His eyes got real big, and I looked at him and said, that's okay, that's okay. So if you're going to make excuses with your spouses, like, please coordinate them, right? Like, my wife's sick, and they say, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Like, really? Well, I heard you were sick. Like, coordinate your excuses together. So this guy said, I would love to come, but, you know, this wife... I just got married. It's her fault. I can't be there. See, they were all three of these instances were just making excuses to why they could not come to this feast. And when I think about that, that's how a lot of us are. We're so good at making excuses. 
And I love the way the scripture reads it when it talks about what God wants us to do different or what he wants us to be better. What we have to understand, if we read this scripture, it said his grace is sufficient. Yes. His grace is sufficient. And he said, I, his grace is sufficient for my power is made perfect in weakness. He said, I am weak. Therefore, he said, I will boast. I will boast about my weakness. Why do we boast about our weakness? Because it's in our weakness Christ's power strengthens us and rests on us. I need the power of Christ to fulfill what God has me to do in my life. And I, when I have his power, then I'll have the ability to stop making excuses. excuses. So here, I'll help you with this on, on eliminating these excuses. So... Here's a question I want you to think about. You don't have to answer it out loud, all right? What does God want to be different or better in my life right now? Now listen to the question. I didn't say, what do you? I said, what does God want to be different or better in my life right now? What does the creator of the universe, who loves me, who created me, what does he want to be different or better in my life? And some of you, you're afraid to ask this question because maybe you're afraid of the answer that he'll give you. Maybe God wants something to, to be different or better in your life. For me, I try to, to, trying to become more generous. And I'm trying to, to model generosity in every area of my life. And I was at a place I love to get their pizza. And I was there uh, a couple days ago. And I had my two sons. And we were eating together. And when I walked in, there was a man that I'd known my whole life. And I saw him there. We chatted for a minute. And when I go over and sit down, I feel like the Lord spoke to me. And or something spoke to me. And maybe it's God or my flesh. I didn't know for sure. I don't claim everything that I hear is God. But I heard say, pay for their meal. I said, okay. So let me just ask you this. Some people say I can't be generous. If I would tell you right now, okay, that you had to have $30 to leave this place. Now, let me stop and tell you I'm not taking up an offering and I'm not having you give money. None of that. But if I would say, do you have $30 right now? Or could you come up with $30 in order to walk out the door? You had to pay $30. How many of you could say, yeah, I could probably swing it? Most of us. Some of you are, you know, we'll pray that God bless you. But most of us, and you'll spend that after church anyway. But anyway, so 30 bucks. Now, if I said 300 and maybe a few hands, not too sure. Now, if I said 3,000, let's talk after church about donating to the church, right? But no, nobody has that laying around. Some, some people might, some people might not. But anyway, the whole point is this. In order for me to be a blessing, it cost me $30. Now, immediately when I felt led to pay for this gentleman and his wife and the, the child that was there, Mill, the immediate thought was, is, I'll get it next time I see him. The immediate thought was, is, what if he ordered food for seven generations and it's like $150, $200 here, you know? <laughs> the immediate thought was, let me see how much it costs first, and then I'll decide whether I want to be generous or not. And that's how a lot of us are. We're like, first tell me how much it costs, then I'll decide if I want to be generous. That's not how generosity works. Come on, come on. Okay. So I was obedient, and uh, I, I paid the bill, and later that night... He found me, he found my phone number, called people, said I had to get no phone number, called me and just said, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you. And what did it cost me? 30 bucks? 30 bucks, just to be generous. The point is this, you don't have to be rich to be generous. Stop making excuses of I don't have. You already are blessed. You know, generosity can be this. Maybe if we get snow going out and shoveling somebody's driveway and just saying, you know, I don't want nothing for it. Generosity is something that we all can model. And you don't have to have the wealth of the world to be generous. So I decided I wasn't going to make excuses. No matter what the bill was, I was going to pay it. And then if it was too much, you know, I'd just deal with it. But it wasn't too much, 30 bucks. So I took care of it. Why? Because when the Lord needs you to do something, we need to be obedient. Amen. And what is God asking you to do? Maybe God's telling you to get involved with work in the youth. Or maybe God's telling you to work with the children. Maybe God's telling you you need to be a greeter. A.K.A. we're having a greeters meeting right after church in the cafe. So if you are a greeter or if you're interested in being a greeter, I'm meeting you all in the cafe after church. So make sure you go loop around and come in the cafe. We'd love for you to be involved in greeting. Amen. 
Amen. It's a great thing to greet people when they come into the church. Amen. 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 So what do you believe God wants to be better or different in your life? Now let me tell you this. I want to say this because sometimes what you're doing is already what God wants you to do, but you need to just be a little bit better at it. I said, maybe it's not something different. Maybe God wants you just to be better at what you're already doing. Do you know a statistic says that we only really give 40% effort into things that we do? 40%. We coast with 40%. What would happen if by the grace of God we said, I'm going to give 50, I'm going to give 60, I'm going to give 70? What would happen if we actually gave 100% to what God has called us to do? Imagine what would happen in our lives if we gave it our all. Amen? Amen. So what does God want to be different or what does God want to be better in my life? And if you have something in your mind that you want to be better at or different, I want you to lift your hand up real quick. I'm not going to call you out. Lift your hand up real quick. Real quick. For those who did not lift your hand, if you're sitting by them, look around. You are sitting near perfection. You have Jesus Jr. right there with you. Amen. <laughs> And for those who are perfect and there's nothing you need better or different in your life, keep doing what you're doing. You're what we're striving for. For the rest of us, we have some work to do. Amen? Amen. So what does God want to be different in my life? So here's the next question. If you have that in your mind, okay, I want to give you the next question that you really need to answer. So we know what the what is, right? What does he want to be different or better in my life? It's already come in most of our minds. If not... Watch the message later, and you can think of it then. So here's the next question I want you to think about. Why? Why does God want this to be different in your life? Why? What is the why behind the what? What is the spiritual why he wants that to be different? Let me give you an example. My goal is I said, I want to be. What do I want to do? I want, what do I want to do? I want to be a better pastor. Why? Because I love people and I believe everybody's precious or, or because I believe everybody's messed up and they're all nuts that I pastor and I'm the biggest nut of them all and maybe that's the reason. Now let's go back with you're all precious and wonderful, right? Listen, church is a bunch of messed up people. We really are. We're messed up, but we need Jesus. So what is the reason why I want to be a better pastor? Because I believe souls matter. He's called me to this place. Amen? They matter. So how do I develop that? How do I become better at being a pastor? Well, some of it's pretty simple. Like, one of the things is maybe we need to, need to spend more time talking to Jesus, right? Because he is our senior pastor. So I'll, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to seek him, and I'm going to hear from him, and, and I'm going to get in his word, and I'm going to study his word. I'm going to study to show myself approved, a work that need not to be ashamed. And I want to be available to people. I don't want to run and hide and sit in an office. I want to be touchable. I want to be able to people to see me. See, that is the why behind my what. And I realize this, and this is what really overwhelms me when I stand up here on Sunday, and I think that sometime maybe this is the only time I'll ever have a chance to speak to somebody and speak into their lives, because maybe they'll walk out the door and never come back, or maybe they'll walk out the door and who knows, but this might be the only chance that I get to present Jesus to somebody, so I want to be prayed up, ready to go, studied up, and bring the best that I can bring. See, that is the why, because souls are going to hell. And they need Jesus, and this is your day to change your direction and change the course of generations. This is your day to say, I am going to be different and sell out to him. So what is the thing that God wants to be different, and why? For some of you, you might say, well, maybe I want to read the Bible. Why? Because God wants you to grow spiritually. And every day you're going to say, I'm going to put my nose in the book and read it for 15 minutes. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe your thing is, what do I want to do? I want to pray. And somebody say, I'm going to pray every day for one hour. Don't start there. Say, I'm going to pray for 15 minutes. Start there. It's like a person saying, I'm going to get on the treadmill. I'm going to walk for two hours straight. And you have been on a treadmill or walked in years. And all of a sudden you're going to do two hours. No. Start with 10 minutes. Come on, right? 
And then add a minute or two. Start small, but then grow it. Yeah. And ask yourself, what is the reason? What is it? What is some of you saying? God wants me to get out of debt. Why? So I can be financially secure and stable in my life. Because I would love nothing more when the preacher says, we have a need for a sound system. We have a need for a family. We have this need to say, Pastor, I got it. I've been waiting for there to be a need because God's blessed me. Someone say, I'll never do that. I'll never be able to be that. If you keep paying all your interest to Capital One and American Excess and all that, you never will. Come on. But it's time to line up. The Bible gives us the principles of how to do this. So you need to connect the spiritual why to the what. And all of a sudden when you do that, guess what happens? You start to eliminate the excuses to why you can't do it. When I say what he wants me to do, and I understand why he wants me to do it, and the why, what and the why are connected, all of a sudden the excuses become minimal. Why? Because I'm relying on his strength. Because when I am weak, he is strong. And let me tell you, whatever God's told you to do, let me tell you this, if it's something you can do on your own ability, it's probably not God. Because God will give you something that you need His ability to accomplish. Amen. And guess what? When you try to do it on your own, you will fail every time. But when you put the why to and you understand who's calling you to do it, and He's the one who's strengthening you, then you'll be able to do it. Amen. Am I making any sense to anybody yeah. here today? Or am I just preaching to myself? We hear you. What he called me to do, is it me-centered or is it God-centered? Because if it's me-centered, it's about me. If it's God-centered, it's about him. It's about him and it's about him empowering me. That's right. That's what God wants us to do. He wants to make it all about him. So I ask you the question, what does he want you to do? What does he want to be different or better in your life? And what is the big why? Because the why is what will keep you motivated. Why does God want this for me? Why? And if you get the why down and you understand the what and the why, all of a sudden, the how, let's get to the how. How is, how is it going to be accomplished? It's through his strength. Because when I'm weak, he's strong. I will boast in my weakness. Some of you, I want you to challenge you right now. This is going to be hard for some of you. I want you to say these words. I am weak. Now, some of us men, we got out of war and we couldn't finish it. Understand? You were weak. What'd you learn at church today? Pastor insulted me and told me I was weak. <laughs> but we are. We're weak. That's why we need his strength. Right. When God, when I figure out what he wants me to do, when I figure out why he wants me to do it, I have to understand that I can rely on his strength. I will boast in my weakness because when I'm weak, he is strong. Oh, he will right. give me the strength to do it. Come on. I can do all things through right. who gives me strength. That's right. Amen. So let's finish this story, all right? And just give the Lord a hand clap so I can get a drink. Thank you. <laughs> So let's finish the story. Verse number 21. Watch what happens here. Go ahead and read that. So the servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. In other words, he said all those who were invited and made excuses to why they couldn't come, give their invitation to somebody else. Ooh. I wonder how many times we make excuses to why we can't do things and God says, maybe I'll give this blessing to somebody else. I want all he has for me. And to stand here and think that I've missed it many, many times and I don't claim to be perfect. I'm a messed up individual. And to think that there's many times that I've missed it and I've missed out on favor and blessings because I was too stubborn to follow through and I made an excuse. And he said, for those who made excuses, Get about them. Go out and get the poor, get the main, get the crippled, get the blind. Bring them into my house. 
God wants his house to be filled. And he told him this. He said, sir, he said, the servant said, I have done what you have ordered. But watch this in verse 22. He said, but there's still room. And that brings encouragement to me because even though you feel like you're a thousand miles away from God and you don't know what you're going to do, I'm here to tell you there's still room at the banquet for you. There's still room at the table for you. There's still room in the kingdom for you. There's still room for everybody in this valley. There's still room at the school for those children. There's still room at the college for the kids. There's still room at the senior centers for the seniors. There's still room at the workplace for your coworkers. There is still room. Somebody shout, there's room. There's room for everybody in the kingdom of God. This is a growing kingdom. You understand that? This is a growing kingdom. And I want to say this because this is important. The fact that the kingdom is growing, you're going to get people in the kingdom that maybe are better than, better doing your job of what you're doing or your ministry. So the question is this. Do you hold on to it and say, I shall not be moved? Or do you celebrate it and say, here's somebody who can do a little better than me, and I'm going to step back and step into something else, and I'm going to cheer you on. This happens sometimes in the kingdom is we hold on to positions like with, with a death grip and we don't want to see other people succeed or grow past us. Come on, come on. Let me just say it like this. If we are not raising up the next generation of believers and passing the baton to them while we are running, we've missed it. Right. Come on. I said we've missed it. Right. Come on. We celebrate our youth around here. We celebrate our young people around here. Yes. We believe in you. You are yes. not the future generation. You're the now generation. Right. There's room at the table for you. Yes. There's room in the house for Come you. On. And I want you to understand, you may be 80 years old and say, this church is too young. No, there's room for you here. Right. Right. I love this lady over here. How old are you, Miss Barb? 87. 87, and she can dance better than anybody in this church. If she can get up on that walker, she will jam with the youth. Amen. She loves it. And you know what's crazy? She says close to the speaker. Somebody like, it's too loud. She's like, get me up close. <laughs> Man, you're an inspiration. I hope I'm still rocking for Jesus at the age you're at. Amen. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Because there's room for everybody in the kingdom. You understand that? Everybody is valued. And when we get to the reality, let me just help you here. I realized this a long time ago. I'm really not that important. When we realize we're really not that important, and God doesn't need us, but he wants us, it changes how we see things. Come on. Amen. It does. It changes how we see things. Because God wants us all to be in the room. And I don't care if I'm standing here or I'm sitting in the back. I'm just glad I'm in the room. That's it. I just want to be in the room. I just want to be in the room. There's your song, I want to be in the room when you move, right? Get it ready. I just want to be in the room. That's it. I want to be in the room. I want to be a part of the things that God is doing. And I want to cheer on people. And, and I want to invest in people. And, and I told... Some people this, I said, here's, I told my boys this, I said, here, when this church, I said, when, when, when I start to decrease and, and some of you start to increase and stuff, I said, if you guys do not take this ministry further than what I took it, you are failures. I want you to hear that from me. You are a failure. Because let me tell you what we're doing. And this is what we're doing in ministries. This is what great is great in ministries. And sometimes it's hard to hand it off, right, Miss Charlotte? It's hard to hand it off. But if you develop it and build it, you are eliminating a lot of the things that they have to go through. And you're giving them something that's already established so they should run further. Yes. They don't have to build the foundation. For some of you, you're the first generation to serve the Lord. But guess what you're doing? You're raising up a generation of children that are going to have a much stronger yes. base than you. They're going to know more Bible stories than you. Why? Because you're making church a priority. Because maybe it was never a priority in your life. But you are changing a generation and saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And guess what? Your kids are going to go further than you. And you're going to be happy about it and cheer them on. It's what it's about. It's about the kingdom. 
And when you realize you're really not that important, this is a big kingdom. It's a big kingdom. You're really not that important. It'll go on with or without you. But I'm glad there's room in the kingdom for me, and I want to be a part of it. Amen? Amen. And watch what happened in verse 23. Go ahead. Then the master told his servants what? Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. He said, compel them to come in that my house may be what? Filled. Filled. He wants his place to be yes. filled. Amen? Amen. Yes. And he said, I tell you, watch this. Not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. In other words, the ones who made excuses, they're not here. But the ones who said, is there room for me? I just want to be in a room. Come on. Is there room for me? I just want to be in a room. As you stand your feet in this place, I want Hope Church to be a place that fills up heaven. I said, I want this to be a place that fills up heaven. Because the scripture we read in Luke 14 and 16 said, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. Well, let me tell you, over 2,000 years ago, there was one who came, and his name was Jesus. And he came, and he became sin who knew no sin. And he said, I'm going to die and be persecuted and be ridiculed and beat beyond recognition. And I'm going to overcome death, hell, and the grave. So you can have eternal life. He already paid for it. Now you have a choice to receive it or make an excuse. Remember the invitation I got? This is a good one. Everyone know what it says? Anybody? Two people. Oh, right, well, you two come over here and I'll share with you. The rest of you. Anyone know what my invitation says? Yes! Let's try it again. Anybody know what my invitation says? Yes! This is the best invitation that I ever got. And this will be the best invitation you'll ever get. It says this. You're invited. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is your invitation today.